Konnichiwa. <clears throat> My name is Patricia Larkin Green, and I teach sumie at the Japanese Culture Center. So, what is sumie? Sumie is a practice. It's one of the Japanese arts, and if you consider the name of the art form, sumi means ink, and a means picture. So basically, it's making pictures or paintings with ink. So I'll tell you a little bit about the history of sumie and how I practice it and how we teach it at the Japanese Culture Center. The practice hails back to um, early, early China. And so it's an art form that's over 2,000 years old. It came to Japan through Buddhist monks traveling to Japan, and they taught. They taught in monasteries, and they taught the literati. And the, the art form actually was embraced as a practice in Buddhism. And this is the type of ink painting that I teach. So it's more of a, a Zen art. The idea of sumie painting is more about the process and the practice. As an oil painter, it informs my art making. I think that sumie is available to anybody, so you don't need to be an artist. Really, it's just another way of taking a journey through life. So you discover, you discover things about yourself and when you begin the practice, we start at the Japanese Culture Center with doing some yoga and some breath exercises because when you're painting, you are taking your, your mind, all your thoughts, you're emptying your thoughts, and you're moving, you're moving when you paint, and so you're bringing in harmony your mind, heart, and spirit. I'll show you the tools that you use when you paint. Really, all you need are ink, water, and a brush, and some paper to paint with. There are specific types of brushes to use that are highly recommended, and actually, all of the tools are called treasures. So let me show you what those tools are. The first tool is the brush. The brush is very special in that it actually is made with combinations of hairs so that in the center that the hairs are very stiff and resilient and so they're springy and then the outer hairs are soft and very they're very absorbent so they hold a lot of of water and ink. And what's great about the way that they're designed and they're made is that every time you dip the brush into the water, it comes back to a point. Um, see that? So it comes back to a nice point when you load it with water. And that makes it very wonderful to control. The other treasures would be the ink stone. And if you notice, it comes to, it kind of slants down. And this is actually called the sea. And this is the land. But the next treasure, which is an ink stick, where you dip your ink stick into the sea and pull it up onto land. And then you rub it. And as you rub it, you're making ink. And one of the lovely things about this ink stick and stone is that if you were to, if you were to smell it, it emits all of this fragrance because when the stick is actually made, it's made with soot and animal glue, and then they mix in some different fragrances and herbs to make it a, just a, a whole beautiful experience as you're mixing the ink. You mix your ink, and while you're mixing your ink, you're preparing, and you're preparing your mind and your heart and your body and your breath. So it's all about the breath and focusing on what it is that you might paint. And this is a very relaxing way to prepare yourself for creating. Now, when you start to paint, you're using the brush and it's just like um, when you write, anyone can write their name, right? And when you write your name in different moods, the way you paint depends on your mood. 
And so that's why when we begin, we, we want to get centered. There, I've mixed my ink. And then the last of the four treasures would be the paper. And the paper has a smooth side and a rough side. And the paper is highly absorbent, which means that when you paint on it, the, the, um, the, the ink will just get sucked up by the paper. You, whatever you're experiencing, is go you're going to be leaving your mark right into the paper. And so it's a great way just to kind of check in with yourself on how you're feeling and how you're doing that day and how centered you are. Now I'm going to show you how you prepare your brush. So you'll load it by getting it wet and then you want to dip it in the ink. Now I've mixed some ink here in the ink stick with the ink stick and stone, but often what people will do today is they'll just go ahead and use liquid ink. So whichever is available to you, you can do either way. And then you mix your ink and your brush by getting your brush wet, picking up a little ink, and then making a gray. So now I've got gray halfway down on my brush. And then I'm going to just put a little tip of the dark black ink on the tip of my brush. And so now I've got a nice, a nice blend. So let's take a look at what I've done with my brush. If I were to do a stroke, I get this nice gradation. So this is also called like one stroke painting. So what I can do now is I can um, show the one breath, one stroke. And you might start to see a bamboo tree emerging. And this is one of the first strokes that you learn to paint. And so you just practice. Remember, it's a practice. So it's it's all about exploration um, with your breath and your mind and your heart and your spirit. And you learn to paint a couple of different clusters of strokes. And these strokes are clustered around these ideas, which are called the four gentlemen. Now, the four gentlemen are um, symbolic of these virtues in the Japanese culture. And they're also um, very symbolic and seasonal. So let me show you a couple examples. Um, in wintertime, you learn to paint um, plum blossom. And so you learn some different strokes that will show you um, how to paint like the bark of a tree and the buds of flowers. So that's one cluster of strokes. So you can see that you learn how to do some dry and there's the gradation that we just did for the bamboo. And so you start to build on these different strokes. The next um, series of, of strokes that you learn would be for the next gentleman, which is um, grass orchid. And so here you start to learn to be, you know, a little bit more expressive in your brush strokes. And you start to build and put all these different brush strokes together and you can start um, making paintings. So if I were to now use this um, paintbrush and I'm going to just add a little bit more ink and I'll show you how to do the grass orchid. I dip the, the brush back into the, the water and I pick up a little bit more ink and blend it. 
And now I can show you how to do those strokes where you just inhale with one breath and one stroke and one breath and one stroke. And so you end up sort of dancing as you paint. And you start to put all of these different strokes together. And you can start to create um, little scenes if you'd like. The next gentleman would be the um, chrysanthemum. So now you learn um, a series of different strokes where you put them together um, and you can start to create different kinds of flowers. And so you build on some of these strokes that you were painting from before. And now you, you just press a little bit more and you lift and you press and you lift. You press and you lift. And so it's a very gentle, thoughtful way to paint. Here's a painting of bamboo. So when you are learning the different strokes for the bamboo, you learn um, the gradation that I showed and then how to make the segments and then the bamboo leaves and then how to connect them all together into a painting. And the next, um, the next example that I'll show you is um, how it hails back to calligraphy. So a lot of these strokes that you learn are based on some of the strokes that you might learn in calligraphy. And don't worry if you haven't studied calligraphy because you'll learn some of these strokes in the Sumia class and you'll learn them as like building blocks for the rest of your painting. So here are some of the other strokes as we look at them as building blocks. So here's the, the bamboo strokes. So you, keep, you just keep practicing and then you learn how to turn and twist your brush so you can make all these shapes. And step by step, you learn how to paint the different techniques so you can build them all together and make paint things like trees. Sumie is just a, a lovely way to create and so whether you are an artist or a parent or a child or a human being, anyone can learn how to pick up a brush and focus on their breathing and then start to move the brush with the rhythm of their breath and start to create. So hopefully you will give it a try and see if it's something that resonates with you. Like I said, it's, um, it's really about the practice and the process of creating as opposed uh, um, to the end result. So I invite you to come join us at the Japanese Culture Center on Sunday mornings from 1030 to 1230, where we will invite you into the journey of Sumie, Asian ink painting. So thank you. And I hope to see you. Have a lovely day.